Welcome back to Shit They Don't Tell You. I'm Nikki Limo. What's up, guys? Iceman here. Um, it's been a while since we've done a conspiracy-ish type episode. Yes. I don't think we've done one all year, actually. 2022 uh, not. has not had one, not one single one conspiracy episode at all. Correct. And by conspiracy, I mean conspiracy theory. I feel like the theory part is important because, you know, these things could be true. Absolutely. And, the, you know, just because it has the word conspiracy in front of it doesn't mean it's not true, you know? That's that's the whole point. So we have done, in the past, Aliens. Many uh, Alien episodes. Yes. Uh, My favorite. Mermaids and uh, Mermen, Centaurs and all that stuff. Um, we've done Flat Earth. But uh, we've never explored Hollow Earth. And I always thought that that was like, you know, something I wanted to look into, but just didn't have time. It's a fun one. And then when I went to look into it, I couldn't find a lot of information at first. Like, I was kind of getting deterred because I was like, oh, this is like nothing. Like, oh, it's like maybe journey to the center of the earth with the rock is real. Like, and that was like pretty much it. And uh, and then I was like, so I kind of gave up on it for a little bit. I was like, maybe I'll do simulation theory, which I still want to do. I still want to do an episode on simulation theory. We'll explore all the theories. But um, but yeah, Hollow Earth, I didn't really see much until recently. And then I was like, oh, shit, this all is juicy. And I think we should talk about it. Um, I didn't have time to do like a really deep dive. Usually what I like to do is learn a bunch of information and that like why people think why people th believe in hollow earth theory and then research like all the reasons why they shouldn't you know like yeah. the other side of it but i didn't really get to look into like all the debunking stuff yet so i'm just gonna go over the the theory and why people believe in hollow earth if that's cool with you let's do it if like you're okay with that very cool with it all right so first of all the theory is that earth is actually not like layers of molten lava and then an iron core at the center, but actually a very spacious inner earth with worlds inside worlds. So inside of our earth is, an, is a multiple earth? Yes, uh, there's um, spheres, which we'll get into, but uh, a couple weird things that <clears throat> might support this, or maybe you've noticed, or you're like, huh, that's weird, is that there's birds that um, they fly, you know, normally birds fly south for the winter, you know, towards the equator because it's warmer there. These birds fly to the poles. Why Why are they doing that? They, get, they we put tracker devices on them, and the tracking devices disappear when they get towards the poles. They just stop working. Are we sure that that happens? That happens. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. I, I just heard about this it. This is what you're hearing, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm telling you what the people are okay, saying. Okay, I understand. And I saw uh, images of birds flying towards separate directions while they were <clears throat> explaining it. Well, that so makes sense. I was like, that, So yeah, you that saw stock up. footage of birds that going in different up. directions. You're like, that, that makes up. sense. Look, the visuals right there. So I believe in Hollow Earth because uh, yep. uh, I saw the birds. Saw the writing on the wall. Love it. Um, also, a lot of explorers, many a, an explorer have reported that after a certain point of exploring the poles, that the temper the ice starts to disappear and the temperature gets very, very warm, like almost unbearably warm. Did the explorers go the wrong way? Maybe, <coughs> but not in the stuff that I watched. Okay, my bad. I watched a stock footage of a man on a boat going the right way, going to from through ice and then into warmth. Yeah, maybe he just went the wrong way. Listen, I saw what I saw. Okay. Okay, so let's back it up a bit. Um, have you ever heard of scientist and astronomer Edmund Haley? No. Perhaps you have heard of the Haley's Comet. I have. Oh, you have. Okay, good. So you've heard of the man that discovered the Haley's Comet. He actually discovered, like predicted the the path of the comet, which is now known as his comet. And he was completely right about that. It's pretty sick to have your own comet. I know, exactly. Who else has that? Not many Hale people. Bob? Who's Hale Bob? Hale Bob? Is yeah, he I think a he person? ran for president. Okay. <laughs> in a different, in no, a different planet? Like in the 80s. In the 80s. Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't vote for him. Um, I couldn't. Yeah, it was a sperm. No. Not even, probably, yet. I might have voted for him if, had I been able to. If sperm had rights, we would have been able to vote for True. him. True. But anyway... Um, so this man, very notable scientist, astronomer, smart, smart human being, he had reservations about theories of a dense earth, the current 
theory. He says that the magnetic anomalies of the Earth could only be the result of a different composition. And he believed that beneath the Earth's crust were two thick concentric walls that spun counter to each other. concentric wall? Like uh, concentrated, so circles. Okay. Circles, okay. Oh, concentric wall, okay. Yeah, okay. So are you okay? Got it. You know, like if you put an Easter egg inside an Easter egg. Got it. Okay. Um, and he, so he believed that there are two thick concentric shells and that each shell had its own atmosphere, luminosity, and possibly life. Bum, bum, bum. Well, sure. I think like that, civilizations. That's, oh, I see. Civilizations. Like civilizations and animals. Got it. Like things that. Well, like we a, find like life on the ocean's floor. Okay, an earth within an earth. Got it. So, no, advanced civilizations, wow. intelligent life. Damn. Intelligent life, yes. Uh, he speculated that you could enter the Earth through the poles. Um, the the Hale Bob guy came up with no, this? No, uh, Haley's, the Haley's, Haley's comic, comic guy, uh, Haley's comic Edmund guy. Haley. Okay. He did not run for president. Okay. He predicted a, a comet path very accurately. Smart and he, guy. And he thought that you could go th- into the Earth through the poles. Why wouldn't you? Why are you a smart guy? You smarter than the guy no, that knows saying, about comets? He thinks there's just a fucking hole there? Yeah. Uh, on both sides. Because um. <laughs> we can't... Nice. I like that. No, because we can't... I mean, we obviously haven't even cracked the surface of how deep the Earth is, like, mm-hmm. with our deepest digs, even. So, if you look at um, some images of Jupiter and Saturn and other planets out there in the solar system, um, there's actually images of, at their poles, there's, like, a dark spot. And there are concentric shells that seem to rotate around this dark spot. You don't think it's a storm? Uh, it might be, but um, it could also be concentric shells. I understand. That support <laughs> like very, life within life. True. And if this is true on other planets, it would be kind of uh, not too crazy to say that maybe Earth is the same way. Mayhaps uh, Earth also has uh, poles that um, are dark spots in there. Hey, it makes sense because Big Globe likes to show us globes that have holes in them where that's how it spins on the axis. Yeah, on the axis. So it's like it's right there. It's right in, it's front, of right your faces. in front of your face. Big Globe. I've always been suspicious of Big Globe. So like why is Big Globe hiding this from us but also Flat Earth? Like, why so they, they can sell both? shitloads of globes to schools. What if? And colleges and universities. There's like giant... Uh, metal things on the axes and like there's someone it's just sick. each earth Some is sitting actuator. in a classroom somewhere in space um so on the other planets you can see light emanating from these holes uh and it's very similar a pattern to the aurora borealis have you heard of that of course green mm-hmm. they are kind of green the light they can be so he was like hmm maybe i don't know maybe earth is doing that too I think he's pretty smart. I like his voice. <laughs> that was a pretty spot arm impression. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. I like I, it. I didn't even practice. Um, okay, so a little bit later, Swiss mas- a Swiss mathematician and physicist named Leonard, oh sorry, Len- yeah, Leonard Euler, who is considered still one of the greatest mathematicians of all time. Uh, he actually agreed with Haley that the Earth was hollow and even has its own inner sun, he says. And that you can access this inner part from the North and South Poles. This is one of the most notable mathematicians in history. Where the history. shit are they coming up with this stuff? From math and science. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a couple different things, but okay. So where I was reading this information, I don't know if you know this about me, but science, physics, all that stuff is not my forte. I like math, but physics, not my forte. So they're explaining all this stuff about how our current theories of gravity have recently been um, disrupted by uh, some events that happened in 2017 with these like two stars that did some shit. And anyway, like <clears throat> gravity, the theory, like it may be completely different than how we understood it before. Okay. And that's that, plausible. Okay, so then that affects how the Earth would create the this like electromagnetic field and all this stuff, and would further support more of a hollow Earth than a dense Earth. I see, because it's it changes the way that we calculate mass of the planets and all this stuff. 
I skimmed it, but you could do a deep dive yourself. If you're listening out there, you're like, this chick sounds dumb. You're right. I just don't. I don't I yeah. don't get it. They said a lot of words. And if I try to repeat it, I am at the mercy of sounding even dumber. Well, they, we talk all the time. It, it's talked about how we don't quite understand gravity and how it all works. Yeah. So. Abs- gravity is still con- a theory. Yes. Believe it or not. It is. Okay. But a lot of people don't know that because we're just told it so much in school that I didn't even know that it was just a theory. I see. Um, until I was, yeah, I was reading all this and I was like, oh shit, it was just a theory? Damn. Okay. <laughs> shit. Damn. Okay, damn. So they're exploring other things and then, you know, these theories all line more up with uh, a less dense earth and a way for um, a Taurus of energy to travel <laughs> through. And you know what Taurus is? It's a bull. No, but like, not, not like... Oscar. It's an astrological sign. No, not that. It's... A flow of energy. I had an ex who was a Taurus, and okay. they were very difficult it's to talk not to. A, it's not the astrological sign. I know it's confusing because we're talking about astronomy, but it's not that. Um, you see it in nature all the time, and it's basically... So when um, a planet is being formed, it's like it start, It doesn't start out as like this hard ball. It starts out as this like this like almost like spinny thing okay like a tornado almost like a like a cyclone of matter and stuff and it needs a way for it to like i don't know manifest itself into like a solid form and then to do that it creates like a torus of energy and i'm just spouting a lot of words that i heard yeah um love it i don't know exactly how it becomes a planet but somewhere along there there's a fucking torus involved Feels okay like i'm getting secondhand info which i really enjoy I am the best messenger Mm -hmm. of scientific information. Um, So you might be asking yourself, well, Nikki, if this was true, like what about satellite pics? Couldn't we just freaking see if the poles of the earth had a giant vortex that went into concentric shells? Not if it's covered in ice. Exactly. First of all. Exactly. Very hard to even find pictures of the poles. Why? It's being hidden from us. Conspiratorially, I've seen pictures of the holes. What hole? What did they? What they look like? They just look normal. They were holes. No, they weren't so, holes. They weren't holes. No. Why? Why weren't they holes? Was it? Mayhaps they were covered with cloud coverage, or there was mayhaps clouds. there was ice coverage. There was ice as well. Mayhaps there might even have been like weird Photoshop shapes over it. There was, yeah, there was claymation. Blobby. There was claymation reindeer and snowmen. Okay. The pictures that I saw. I didn't see those pictures, They're but I did see like I'll, some I'll edited, you. heavily edited, like square, like just solid squares that were covering the poles. Like clearly, someone doctored the photos. Okay, so I, I understand um, people's hesitation to believe that maybe what we're being told isn't the truth, because NASA is out there lying to all of us, hey. editing the freaking poles. Cover Please stop up. editing the polls, Cover NASA. Cover up holes. Please just stop editing let the polls. Let us see your hole. Let us see the fucking holes. Let us see the holes, please. Okay. Well, they won't. Um, so when they are revealed, oh, yeah, when they are revealed, it always has that over it. Um, also, planes aren't allowed to fly within a certain distance of the poles. Like uh, if you look at all the flight paths, there's like a hole. Very few there's go a, over. just a gap. No, no, <clears throat> like none. You're not allowed to. Well, I've seen some planes do without it. No, within a certain distance, they can go over Antarctica, but not at the poles. They're not supposed to because on account of emergencies. Emergencies for what? Well, if there was an emergency, they had nowhere to land. It's just a bunch of fucking ice. So you're just not allowed to. Why can't I do what I want with my body? I know with your plane. I know. If I want to go with my plane, I know. And and risk dying. I agree. Why do you care? I agree with you. You should have to sign a waiver, and then you get to go. I've always thought that. But they don't even let you sign a waiver. Yep. Why is that? I don't know. Freaking conspiracies, ma'am. So there are a few images that you can find that have been released. Um, some from Russian space programs, like not the U.S., um, which actually show some pretty crazy anomalies around the poles, as well as on all the other planets and on the moons. There's You could see holes at the poles. There's holes at the poles. <laughs> Careful, you know. What? Careful. Well, are you careful about the holes of the poles? Yeah. Don't worry. I'm not even allowed to go there. Okay. It's a case of emergencies. That's true. I would get sucked into a hole at the pole. That is something that would happen to me. Don't lie. It's an, that's an episode. For sure. You know that would. Okay. I'd be like, come on. Can't we go? Can we go see? I do want to see. I'm so curious, but you're not allowed to. I know. 
Okay, so um, and let's talk about inner oceans. So the first deepest hole that humans have ever dug, and this is what you were talking about earlier. My I, ex-girlfriend. I believe. No. Or is she a deep, really deep hole? The deepest ever dug. Hmm. So that's why you dug her? Nice. <laughs> All right. So there was the, it was in 1970 and um, in Russia. It was called uh, the Kola, Kola Super Deep Borehole. It took 20 years to make. Drilled for 20 years into the Earth's crust. How far we get? Um, 400 miles. Wait, no. Sorry. They went a little bit. <laughs> and then I forgot to write down the whole, the whole amount. Okay, so they went a little bit and then they like suddenly had to stop, but then they used seismographs for the rest of it because they were like, oh shit, we are not allowed to go even like further. And that's, it's just it. Like you can't even question it. Um, so, but the, anyway, what they did do blew up a lot of scientific theories <laughs> because they discovered unprecedented heat when they were digging, fossils, and then a bunch of water. Like a bunch of water. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they they said like there's way more water at the deeper levels of Earth than we ever thought before. Huh. Uh, then in 2014, 20 U.S. geophysicists used seismic readings and they found huge bodies of water 400 miles beneath the surface. Wow. Like huge. Like they speculate that it was like three times more the amount of water than, than what we thought was on planet Earth. Wild. Yeah. Um, and there's, and they said that this is direct evidence supporting the hypothesis that the deep Earth holds just like oceans of water be be below it. it and makes heckin' sense to me because we always talk about how the tectonic plates sliding around and shit. And I'm like, how the fuck are yeah, they doing all, that? They're all a bunch of yurts, all a bunch of boats, a bunch of garbage boats floating around on uh, an ocean down there makes sense to me a little more sense yeah maybe, perhaps i like to think they're holding little volcanoes on them that's fun and that's why we get the heat first and then the water well don't but it, the earth core has a lot of heat to it right so that makes sense if you believe in that <laughs> green you believe in the core theory he's well, still I watched a movie called the core with <laughs> heathery swanks that's uh, that's old news yeah. it's the earth is hollow they found this massive geode inside the earth too they like drilled through this like wall or whatever oh, that's and pretty sick they turn on a light and like the, it was just like <gasps> miles crystals? and miles and miles of geode Shut and up. crystals and shit it was sick that's sick sick movie i prefer that maybe that is it down there i mean how are they standing in it it was if, like diamonds and shit how are they standing in it if it was like a no they had windows they were in a machine hmm. at uh, a drilling device i want to go it was well we can watch the movie uh -uh. okay well um did you also know that science cannot currently confirm the physical structure of the Earth's interior as a fact? You know, we're all taught that in school. Well, that makes sense because we've never seen it. But they, but yeah, but they have always been like, this is how it be. And like, don't ask questions. Oh yeah, that's just theories. But they don't tell you other theories. That's like how the Big Bang Theory is literally called the Big Bang Theory. But they don't tell you other theories. <laughs> You know, That's with the big, big Bang Theory, at least there's like religion and there's like other things, like other theories that people come up with. Mm -hmm. But like um, they, with the Earth's inner structure, it's just like, yo, there's a crust then there's a mantle and then there's lava and shit. And then there's a iron core that's like. Only we had like a small planet we could cut open. I know. And we could look inside of it and see. Like what we do with yeah, all we things just, like, to, when we try we to just, figure out how stuff works. When we're in space, I just snatch a little tiny planet. Yeah, just get a, a little, little tiny baby one. We can't even snatch a meteor yet. <sighs> it's annoying. We're so early. Honestly, super annoying. Yeah. Um. So I talked about the Taurus a little bit and how planets are formed <clears throat> uh, with zero gravity in its center. So its mass accumulates where gravitational and centrifugal forces are balanced. Centrifugal. Centrifugal. My bad. Cre it creates openings at the top and the bottom. And it's a self-organizing system that happens in nature where energy expands and returns to itself. So atoms do this, galaxies do this, apples and oranges, all that stuff. It all is a, a Taurus. What the hell did you just say about apples and oranges? Apples and oranges. What does that have to do cut with it? Cut it open. It? You want to talk about cutting open a planet? Yeah. Okay, you cut it open and like the shape, the way that it's formed, it's like a, it's a Taurus. There's a hole at the top and the bottom and it goes like this. Okay. And it spirals. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 
Is your mind blown yet or like you need more? I need more. Okay. Let's talk about some of the history after this break. After this break. Good tease. Thank you. (laughs) So we're living in a world right now where it's 2022 and getting therapy has never been easier when it comes to therapy and psychiatry. I mean, has it ever been this simple? I don't don't even think it's possible. It's, How simple it well, is. Well, it is, Steve, because with Talkspace, you're able to access your provider from the comfort of your device. It means therapy can be on your schedule and not on the schedule of like anybody else. You know, you don't control me. I make my own schedule. And alleviating the wait times to get an appointment or the travel time to an office can free up time for the rest of your life. Talkspace is so convenient and accessible. It helps me feel supported around the clock. Talkspace lets you send and receive unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist in the Talkspace platform 24-7. With Talkspace, you set the goals with your therapist, and they're going to hold you accountable and make sure that you're really progressing. Therapy can also help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light sometimes. And it's affordable. I mean, like, the cost monthly for Talkspace is just a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. Instead of waiting for an appointment, you could send unlimited messages to your therapist 24-7, and they'll engage with you daily five days a week. And there are thousands of licensed professionals with years of experience in over 40 specialties, including depression, anxiety, substance abuse, trauma, anger management, relationship issues, food and eating, and so much more. As a listener of this podcast, you get $100 off your first month with Talkspace, to match with the licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure you use the code STDTY to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's STDTY and Talkspace.com. $100 is a lot. Jimmy Christmas. I know. Jiminy's. Look at that. Okay. So let's talk about some of the history um, that maybe supports a hollow earth theory. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe supports it. I'm not saying it does or doesn't, but maybe it could. Okay. So there's tons of cultures that have had experiences and have like written and like, you know, made pictures, hieroglyphics about um, interactions with subterranean beings. Like merman. Like a merman, yeah. I have seen those pictures. They're but good. a lot of them are stories with tall giants, like very tall giants and reptilian, advanced reptilian species. How do they know that they're advanced? Because they Reptilians. they have advanced technology. Are they wearing like foil costumes or something? No, not foil. That's some that's some trash. That's like some white trash shit. Oh my bad. No, they're like wearing like uh like gold plated shit. Oh, so yeah, it's like Very tight. Sad. And also they have like they have flying discs that they come probably in. very good at metallurgy then. Maybe maybe they do with their mind. Oh maybe. I don't know. But it was like a. Advanced species, I probably heat shit up with my hands and like, 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 do to, things, to like, me, like bend metals with my like mind. Telekine, telekinesis, tele- telekinesis, yeah. That's moving stuff. It's not, it's not melting, you're not melting metal. Oh, God. <laughs> so, okay, so let me get into this history and stop interrupting me, okay? So there's stories with tall giants or advanced reptilian races. Um, Buddhists talk about the land of Agartha. Have you heard? Of Agartha, yes, and the sub, it's a subterranean empire, um, and it has like very advanced civilization down there, and uh, there's a, even a capital called Shambhala, and uh, they say that the da- they believe that the Dalai Lama is the terrestrial representative of this underground world, so they also believe that. Um, these civilizations have been there for thousands of years, sheltering humanity. So they're like trying their best to like help us out when we when they can. But it's like, like Wakanda. But we're kind of dumb. Yeah, yeah, actually. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's actually, um, <clears throat> they, they believe there's different ways to get there. And some one location is in Africa. Did they just rip off Wakanda though? Uh, no, I think Wakanda ripped off them. Okay. Well, a lot, I heard of, Wakanda a lot first. of like art imitates life kind of stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, a t- they also say that a Tibetan Lama said uh, the capital Tibet was connected to Agartha and the entrance is guarded by Lamas that are sworn to secrecy that like only they know the entrances that connect the two worlds. You're talking about 
Llamas are like shamans or something, right? Dalai Lamas. Oh, Dalai Lamas. Okay. Yeah. Word. So according to Tibetans, <clears throat> Shambhala is a physical space, but it's also an ethereal plane between spirit and our reality, which also kind of makes sense to like why, like, I don't know, all this paranormal is like aliens and ghosts and stuff are all kind of like lumped together. Yeah. You know, well, so this is like, there's like a, there's an ethereal nature to it where like non-physical energy interacts with physical nature and then it feeds into each other okay um and like it interacts with the physical realm as well as being this like ethereal realm right um so uh hindus also spoke about the abode of the excellent ones is what they called it and they have all these um stories of these seemingly half human looking half reptilian species some have you know blue skin and sometimes they would abduct and torture humans uh, but they also have done like notably positive things for the earth and humanity so there's like a particular story about like a blue skinned being who flew here from an airship and they all like all these pictures of the airships look like ufos like they look like those flying discs and they have special names for them too but i I forget what it's called because it's hard for me to pronounce, so I just don't want to butcher it. But they have different names for it um, as well. So that was in India. But Egypt also had a bunch of stories like this. Like there was all these Egyptian deities that um, some of them had different colored skin. And they were like half man and like had like dog heads, you know. I've seen a lot of those. Yeah, exactly. Um, and in nine, 985 A.D., mm-hmm. Eric the Red, who's a Viking explorer, he discovered Greenland. Um, he had like 10,000, anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 Viking colonies that were living there at that time in, in, in 985 AD. And that was the last day that any of them were ever seen. They all, all these colonies, all of them mysteriously disappeared. It's like 10,000 to 100,000 people just mysteriously disappeared, leaving all their belongings behind, which is still one of the greatest mysteries today, except if you ask the native people there. So the native Inuits there say, and they've been saying forever, that those Vikings actually swarmed northward to the wonderland that the natives have long known about, which they call the land of endless summer because it's like warm and it's rich with nutrients and vegetation and lots of game to eat like so your all of your needs will always be met and they basically said that these vikings got lured there and they were like holy shit this place is amazing and they were like fuck earth um i'm going here yeah, I'm and, out. yeah and they all went there <clears throat> okay so that was a viking story so all, all these different cultures have like similar stories of interacting with beings and going to different like worlds like and disappearing and then uh there's have you ever heard of the children of Woolpit? i've heard about this from like way different like i didn't even put the two together um i, I like to watch a lot of like haunting like ghost type things yeah. and like i don't know creepy shit um like when buzzfeed had all those like haunting stuff those shows and they did a thing on the children of Woolpit. uh have you ever heard of them no okay so this is actually pretty crazy so there were there's a place called Woolpit and I think it's England. Um, two children were found coming out of a cave, and they had completely green skin, and they didn't speak any known language. Any no like they spoke this completely foreign language that no one here knows, and they like they conversed in this and they had green skin, and they wouldn't eat anything even though they were starving. They wouldn't eat anything except for raw beans, like. They one day like they wouldn't eat for days. And then one day the farmer that found them had like was bringing home raw beans and they like went crazy and started like eating all of them. So they only ate raw beans for a while. Um, The boy died pretty shortly after they found him. But the girl lived on long enough that she learned um, how to speak English. And she later like explained where they came from. She said that they they were following some of their cattle who had wandered into a cave and they went through this cave and they got lost and they came out like in England in earth. And they said that this was nothing like the world they came from. And she said that, um, this world is like super bright and like in her world was like her world's like more underground and it's like kind of twilight all the time. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a, a more of a smoky type of like twilight, like not 
super bright. Okay. Um, and that <clears throat> it looks nothing like this. Hmm. Like this is really way brighter. And uh, that's what she said. Um, okay. So this kind of lines up with this 1908 book called Smoky God by uh, Willis George Emerson. Have you heard of this book? No. Okay. Well, this is a book called Smoky God or A Voyage to the Inner World. And I think that they, I think he technically classifies it as fiction, but um, it's supposedly based on the true tale of a Norwegian sailor named Olaf Jansen. Now, Olaf Jansen and his dad went sailing when, well, they actually on purpose wanted to go see if there was some inner earth shit, right? Mm -hmm. So they they went on their boat and they went towards where they thought they were told the opening was and they got lost. Um, but then they got swept up into this like vortex and um, they went into this hole and they found this like crazy populized civilization and it was beautiful and it was like lush green um the sky is like how the children of Woolpit described the sky to be and they said it was just like really incredible like everything you could ever want was there like your needs are met it was just a beautiful place the people that lived there were tall like they're like 12 foot tall um and they spent two years there so him and his dad like lived there for two years and then they're like, we got to go back and tell people about this place. So they decided to make the journey back to their homeland and they got in their boat and as they were making their way out back into, you know, our earth, um, they got into like this, there was like a storm and it destroyed their fishing boat and the dad died. But Olaf was found by some fishermen and w when they found him, he told them all about this the story and like where he had been for two years and like he was like oh my god it was like so crazy and like one it was so excited to tell everyone about it and they put him in a mental institution for 28 years probably for the best yeah so they he got put in this mental institution for 28 <laughs> years until he decided he didn't want to die without with his story still in him so he told the story to emerson who put it who wrote a book about it mm. so that's that book um but yeah, he said it was warm. It rained once a day. It was filled with highly charged electrical air. Um, there was lots of vegetation. So you pull electricity from the air and shit. Um, they had twelve foot giants that lived for eight hundred years. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, it was fast. <laughs> they they had fast, noiseless flying objects. That's how they got around. Uh, and yeah, that was like basically he. Oh yeah, during this story when he was retelling it, he even drew maps of everything and like how the whole world operated. Why are these guys such dicks? If you are if you have all this cool shit and you're in the, yeah. in the earth, why don't you just come out here and share it with us? Well, the, oh, you mean the civilizations? Yeah, the civilizations, not the, right. like, these, like, wanderer people Honestly, or these like, nomads. would you want all these people, like, look at Twitter. Have you been on Twitter? Oh, that's true. I wouldn't want Like, Twitter would you want here. all those people, not like... Not Twitter, but... If you had this beautiful paradise, would you want to muck it up with all these dirty humans? Maybe I wouldn't. LinkedIn, I would let LinkedIn come. <laughs> I'm not on LinkedIn. Damn. They seem cool. Everyone seems pretty chill. Nah, they seem like douchey tech people. I would let Discord people in. How about that? Mm. Discord mm. people are, are mm. super chill. Yeah. Okay. I'm down for that. And Telegram. Okay. Well, maybe they're working on a filtering system. <clears throat> okay. I don't know. That'd be cool. Although their filtering system isn't that good because wait till I get to the Nazis. Um, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> let me go through this history first, then we'll get there. Um, so, deep. Deep in the Amazon jungle, uh, there are ancient. Uh, there's an ancient Makushian, Makushians, Makushians. I'm sorry Sounds if I'm mispronouncing. It. Okay, there's there's an ancient tribe of people called Makushians, a civil uh, like a, a col col culture of people, and they're said to be the guardians of inner earth. And these people are completely removed from modern society. They've been living their way for many, 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 many years, thousands of years. They don't need to be part of modern society they have their own ways of doing things and they like it that way and they're said to be the guardians of uh inner inner earth so they describe this journey and the beings in vivid detail and like having not heard from any of these other modern stories like th they describe it in vivid detail and they say that for 15 days like in their entrance, because like I said, there's like different entrances everywhere. Um, for 15 days, you have to traverse through taverns until you see bright flying discs 
And once you're there, you will see beings that are 12 to 18 feet who live in lush green lands. And they also describe like on your way there, you have to go past a lot of like molten rock. Sounds and, easy. But no one's ever told them about any of any of this, like any of the geological information or anything. And that's that's the way that that's they you describe it. A bunch it. of fucking taverns. So you just you like taverns, molten it's like rock. A beer, it's like a beer run. A beer run. Yeah, you know what a tavern is. Uh, no, I mean, like I think they named it after like actual like like caverns, taverns. Yeah, taverns, like where you go get a brew in like well, old Ireland and shit. Well, it's uh, maybe they went through caverns. I don't know. Oh, maybe caverns. I'm like, dude, you go to fucking a bunch of taverns and you see these 18 feet people. It sounds like you're drunk as shit. Maybe both. Okay. Maybe both. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> you go on a a pub crawl. Yeah, it's like a pub crawl. To, <laughs> yeah. That was the word I was looking for. Oh, not beer. Pu- not beer on. Yeah, I was like, pub crawl. it's not a 7-Eleven no, pub crawl. for your fantasy football draft. Run. Yeah. Um, okay. That's hilarious. Okay, so probably caverns, huh? Uh, yeah, probably caverns. <laughs> Maybe when I was writing it, my autocorrect I see. changed it to taverns. I see. I do have okay, well, clumsy fingers. I can picture fingers. it much differently now. I'm like, why they even build all these different taverns? Why not just one big tavern? But they connected all these taverns, 12 of them together. I want, don't make me Google if there's multiple definitions for taverns because now I want to look because I, I wrote taverns and I was pretty. Okay, so far I'm seeing a lot of bars. <laughs> yeah, a lot of bars. A lot of bars. Uh, yeah. hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, you know, there's yet to be known if there's multiple definitions. So let's Look, continue. Taverns on. are just a theory. Okay. It could be caverns or taverns, but let's move on. So there's the group that became the most obsessed with trying to find this inner earth were a group that later became the Nazis. And um, Hitler ordered a team of researchers to find this opening in what he believed to be in Antarctica or the Poles. Hitler was so busy with all this stuff, man. Yeah, he wanted to take over the whole world. Every single old story, you hear that Hitler tried to do something with it. Yeah, dude. It's crazy. I mean, if you're trying to take over the whole world, like, you got to get the inner world, too. You can't just be getting the outer world. You can't just be taking over, like, the surface world. You got to get the inner w- shit also. Like, so, dude was in the Reichstag doing Bloody Mary, too, I heard. He's, like, doing all of this shit. Probably. He, I, you know, he he was a busy man. Yeah. Okay? For sure. So, um, he was obsessed with finding this opening in Antarctica and he ordered a German U-boat. So the, there was this mission where a German U-boat went and they the captain reported back and said they found inner earth and they don't want to come back. They're like, we like it here. Wait, so how do they report? They're on the radio? No, no, he well, it sent, I don't know, sent a letter or something? I don't know. Sent a letter. <laughs> well, no, he ended up coming back, but he said that we don't want to come back. Oh, I see. So... Um, he said the earth is in fact hollow. This is what he said. The earth is in fact hollow. But he said in German. Okay. Um, he then they they he worked with a cartographer and one of the like famous cartographers at the time. His name is Henrik Barron. Um, in 1935, they drew a di- he drew a diagram of Agartha and um, and it was drawn by a German scientist, and then it was backed up in maps in uh, 1966 by this cartographer, Henrik Barron, um, which shows, it shows Antarctica not covered with ice, and it shows uh, underwater passageways spanning across the whole continent, and then they converge at the exact location identified as the opening of inner Earth. And there's a theory, because at the end of World War, World War II, 200,000 scientists and almost a million others disappeared from Germany. And not all of them were Nazis, not all of them, but they disappeared. And also Hitler supposedly died, but some people are like, maybe he went with them and like faked his death or whatever. Right. I've heard that Yeah, And so they all like completely, like 200,000 scientists and a million other people disappeared. Well, we know the scientists got poached too by other countries. Like Werner okay. von Braun so, founded NASA so here. So then, later the US tried to go find those Nazis because they really think that they're like hiding, trying to go into Antarctica. And they got attacked by flying discs. Really? Yeah, and all this got classified, but it recently like pictures have surfaced. Flying discs was up in the Nazis? Flying discs, uh, yeah. That's fucked up. So we don't know. We don't know what happened. We don't know what. 
we don't know maybe hitler was like yo i'm the good guy he's like you have to listen to my listen story to me. he was apparently like very he's a shit stir. Good, very good at speaking yeah, to he's crowds like, you gotta listen to my side so he probably story. like was able to he's convince like, you them. Want to hear their side of the story and then they're yeah, like, exactly. oh, okay, don't like give them a platform is what he said yeah that makes sense don't mm-hmm. give them a platform it's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> okay so this <clears throat> part this dude admiral richard bird jr you heard of him um I think I have actually. I think I've told you about him before because yeah. I have heard like separate stories about him. Yeah. Before and well, I've I was, seen that. I saw that video. The interview, right? Yeah, I saw the interview. Yeah, it was super, super interesting. So this guy has led numerous expeditions to Antarctica and the poles, uh, and wrote in vivid detail about them, um, which he never released until after his death. His son published his diaries, but uh, he explained vivid details of expedition to the north pole uh geographical anomalies flying crafts and how his plane was controlled into their land so this guy before we get into like brushing his whole story off this guy was this is why it's his story so important is that like it's really easy to brush off some like Correct, random Lunatic. yeah guy from a mental institution that said he yeah. went with his dad to the center of the earth whatever but this guy was one of the most decorated officers in the U.S. military history. He had the Medal of Honor, which is the highest medal given by the U.S. for valor. He fought in several wars, led a bunch of missions, uh, led expeditions to Antarctica, and he took meticulous logs of just facts. He didn't embellish. He didn't like write poetry or like details. Like he wasn't trying to write a book. He just logged facts of the mission and like what he what was there what he saw coordinates kind of stuff like that not exactly cuckoo bananas exactly he's very very organized detailed yeah. direct um <clears throat> when bird returned he was interviewed on live tv and this is what you're talking about we've seen on live tv like because they they broadcasted it um and he said i i'd like to see the land beyond the poles he said other things like <clears throat> the land of everlasting mystery he said the most peaceful place on earth he said that there is a vast new territory that's not on any map it's as big as the u.s uh, or bigger and it's never been seen by human beings and it's filled with resources he said it's the center of the great unknown but all of this is about like a mass of ice that he like supposedly he's talking about antarctica yeah. which is just a mass of ice come back from but antarctica, if, you fl- yeah. if you go past the poles there's all these known lands but he said that it's a land that a man has never known it's not on any maps or anything and it sounded like he was kind of trying to talk around it like trying to talk about it, but talk around it. But he definitely said that he was very excited about the future expeditions going there because he thought that there was like just tons of resources that we were going to be able to mine and like use and that it would could solve hunger. It was like it could solve a lot of the of the world's problems by mining these resources. Um, but it, then it just seems like he was sworn to secrecy. Maybe people are like, maybe he was sworn to secrecy because he wasn't like... He wouldn't talk about it. All the expeditions got canceled after that. Like no one, every all these United Nations got together and they they all agreed like no one's allowed to go there. Right. And which is really weird because they've never agreed on anything. They always just started wars over who gets to do it first. But like they decided like yeah, no one gets to go there. We're all gonna like sign a thing saying like we agreed that we no one gets to go there. Scientists go there, but that's about it. Yeah, but not to the poles. Yeah, to Antarctica. Yeah, to Antarctica. Yeah. Um, Although so they go to the pole sometimes. Maybe, but we will never know what they see okay. there. Um, in February of 1947, he talks about uh, the land beyond the poles. Uh, after 1,700 miles, he wasn't past the end of it. Instead, he was flying over green, lush lands filled with lakes and mountains, like tropical areas filled with lakes and mountains, measuring a total of 4,000 miles across and yet, instead of getting, like, notoriety or, like, hey, this man discovered this land, he was it was just, like, silenced. Like, he wasn't allowed to tell the story. Um, then there was this Operation High Jump that happened that the U.S. launched. Um, to f- and they said it was to find coal and resources. But then they later changed it to, like, oh, no, we were just, like, trying to do something else. Like, they didn't, they were, like, super vague about it. No. They sent 33 aircrafts, 13 Navy ships, and 5,000 soldiers and lost many lives. They cut the mission short 
uh, because they had so many fatalities and when they returned, the whole mission was classified. This is where they went to actually... So after this happened, leaks of pictures showed like flying saucers attacking the fleets and the secretary of the Navy and who was the secretary of defense back then, he started to talk. And his, uh, I forget what his name, I didn't write down what his name is. Uh, shit, whatever, it, look it up. It's very important. <laughs> look it up. He was the secretary of the Navy and secretary of defense and Truman forced him to resign and he was taken to a psychiatric ward where he wasn't allowed to talk to anyone, not even his wife. And then later he was found dead and it was declared a suicide and no further questions. Well, he probably asked. killed himself. That probably. makes sense. Yeah. I mean, he had all this information about like some UFOs and then. That's what Epstein did. So. Epstein had a lot of information. So, there and you he go. just decided, you know what? This is a lot of information. It's too much for too me much to handle. Too much information. I can't Gotta it. go. Yep. Peace. Peace, everyone. Deuces. Um, <clears throat> Bird, the, you know, our aviation friend, um, also told a Chilean reporter but said in case of a new war, it was, if it, it, like we were to have another war, it would be a bitter reality that the U.S. would be attacked by flying objects who could fly from pole to pole very quickly. After Bird's death, like I said, his diary was published. And um, he says in his diary, I must write this diary in secrecy and obscurity. It, it concerns my Arctic fi- flight on the 19th day of February in the year of 1947. There comes a time when the rationality of men must fade into insignificance and one must accept the unavailability of the truth. I'm not at liberty to disclose the following documentation at this time of writing. Perhaps it shall never see the light of public scrutiny, but I must do my duty here for all to read one day. Hopefully the greed and exploitation of certain mankind can no longer suppress that which is truth. And then he has all of his logs from the flights that he took um and that's when he talks about you know going 1700 miles on this journey and Mm -hmm. like he he describes um space vehicle or like flying vehicles escorting him to like this the center of the earth i guess like through the this like hole through the hole in the pole and that his vehicle was taken over by them and like he was not in control of his vehicle anymore but they landed him safely and uh, they took him to their their leader and said that they that he was in the land of Agartha, and him and his crew were taken to the ruler, who he described as a delicate and ancient figure. He said um, when or oh, that the. the the, cult, the civilization said that when um, humans dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, uh, this civilization became very concerned for human safety and the survival of the planet. And when they tried to intervene, their craft had been attacked by our military. So he told Bird to go back to the U.S. and warn them all that some shit's going down. Like they got to stop this nuclear stuff. And they took him back to his craft and he told the story to the government and he was like heavily scrutinized for this. And then he wasn't allowed to talk about it. Um, Dude, why don't they just come fucking say it to my face? I know. Other things in this diary. So his final entry. So sneaky. He says, his final entry, he says, these last few years elapsed since 1947 have not been kind. I must state that I have faithfully kept this matter secret as directed all these years. It has been completely against my values of moral right. Now I seem to sense the long night coming on, uh, coming on and this secret will not die with me, but as all truth shall, it will triumph and so it shall. This can be the only hope for mankind. I have seen the truth and it has quickened my spirit and has set me free. I have done my duty towards the monstrous military industrial complex. Now the long night begins to approach, but there shall be no end. Just as the long night of the Arctic ends, the brilliant sunshine of truth shall come again. And those who are of darkness shall fall in its light. For I have seen that land beyond the pole, that center of the great unknown. All right. I believe this shit. Right? 100%. I'm on board now. uh, There were a few other whistleblowers, but um, like one was kind of like a psychic, I guess. So um, like he said some stuff. Yeah, it was a little woo-boo. There's another whistleblower named Corey Good. um, Good strong name. Yeah, who is a whistleblower of a secret space program and says there's a huge population living in Antarctica and the U.S. is not the only nation to have underground bases. I did look him up and it only has him listed as like a producer of a movie called the cosmic secret so I, he maybe he like was whistleblowing and through this movie but um it doesn't really have a lot about him other than that he's a producer and a director and has a youtube channel huh um the um but he says that uh 
the the U.S. is not the only nation to have underground bases. And he says that the Mayans weren't conquered, that they retreated to the inner earth and they have flying crafts that look like rocks, but they're long and cigar shaped. Oh, yeah. Which there have been pictures that surfaced of people who saw these. The cigar shaped is a popular one. Yeah. So he says that, that, like, imagine the Mayans when they disappeared. They went into the inner earth. They survived like several cataclysm. Like uh, that's how human race survived. And all the while, they're, like, coming up with more technology. They, they advanced, like, all this technology. So, like, it's crazy to think because you think of them as, like, this ancient civilization. But they actually, like, continued on according oh, dude, to him. Their pyramids are probably bitching down there. I know, right? Bitching. And then there's other people that claim to be channeling, channeling Palladians, which is, like, an alien race that we've <clears> talked about, I think, before. Maybe, like, there's, like, alien ra- different alien races. But, like, the Palladians are one of them. And, like, people think that they're channeling them. And, um... Corey Good says that these are in fact inner earth beings protecting their location by claiming to be off the planet and he also says that disclosure will be a crazy event but a very necessary one so there's a huge civilization in the earth and by the way I didn't even talk about how uh, I came to getting interested in this because there were like sinkholes in China that like had crazy jungles within these sinkholes and who knows how much further it goes and there's all these every continent has miles and miles of unexplored caves like so many caves like uh in africa and there's uh in kentucky there's like uh i forget how many i wrote down how many miles but uh oh yeah every continent there all these caves have their own ecosystems and um at some point you're not allowed to explore anymore in the caves mm. so you can't explore the poles and you can't explore the rest of these caves without a permit but People are like, well, if all these, like, if you go in these caves, it's like huge, right? Mm -hmm. And they have these ecosystems, but who we don't know how far they go. So sick. So wild. Have you heard about? um, You know, they just they were NASA was just looking at. They were like recording sound in uh, in space somehow, like through um, one of the, I think the new. Mm. Are you talking about the moon that rang like a bell? No, 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 no. Oh, that was interesting too. But the, I'm talking about the because um, I think the moon might be hollow too. Well, they took they took sound from a black hole basically. Oh, and it sounds like what Buddhists always described as Om. Like yeah, that Om sound. Uh huh. It sounds exactly like that shit. Huh. It's fucking crazy. That's wild. But that was wild. Yeah, I mean the like true Buddhists like the like hardcore Buddhists, they they really believe in Agartha and this like. The the physical, actual physical place of Agartha in the earth. Love it. Yeah. Which is, I mean, it's wild. So all of these theories seem to support that there's a, there's basically a civilization that's way more advanced than us in the, uh, in the earth. And it would also explain why like these flying saucers are come out of the ocean sometimes. Totally. And like they go back in, like there's something under there. This is how, um, bendy my belief system is. Yeah. After 45 minutes, I 100% believe this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Sold. And when we talk about simulation theory, you'll 100% believe that too. I would guarantee I will. And the earth is flat probably. It used to be. But now it's hollow. That's right. Um, It also, I guess, would explain like, I don't know, the way she explained it, like it supports more of like how we understand physics and all this stuff. But it sounds like they don't want us to use nuclear bombs up here. And it's like really pissing them off. Like it's kind of like annoying them like we're like the upstairs neighbors that keep stomping around around well they should come talk to us well i think they have been like they've been sending like people back and like they, they're not sending the right the spot. people keep getting locked up in uh mental institutions do they not know about like how we have the news and shit just fucking show up on the news well show up on the news that's what i say maybe they have been you know but maybe i don't know we, how, how so i don't know the reptilians you know they always say that newscasters are reptilians you're scaring the normies baby they always say that we're doing a conspiracy episode if you can't go deep with me if you can't like That's really true. firmly place your tinfoil hat That's on true. atop your head then get the fuck out okay like honestly like you don't belong here this is a conspiracy ass episode okay. and it's all related all right the kennedys oh yeah the moon landing oh see this is where you lose everybody it's all you had related everybody. yeah you had everybody now you just oh, start I had saying them <laughs> yeah you had them all you had shit, them all shit, 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 shit. and then you just start saying random ass Paul shit. mccartney was replaced in 1966 yeah see here we go okay well that's it for today um i hope you enjoyed that i thought it was pretty neat like uh hearing that like these decorated military people are, got like silenced and locked up every time they talk about 
like UFO stuff with military people too. They all had the same kind of problems. I got pictures too, Mark, if you want them, because like it's like, damn, they have pictures of flying saucers attacking the military. Okay. Cool. Okay then. Okay. And it was all like classified until recently. Love it. So yeah, a lot of weird <laughs> shit. Um, I will. I mean, nothing can be confirmed. The only thing about this is I didn't go be- into the deep dive of debunking. So. I'm sure there's a lot of that. That's not as fun. Nothing can be confirmed nor denied. Exactly. That so that's what's so interesting and fun about it. And I enjoyed uh, reading about it. Um, I was like, it's like, it's like, well, actually, this is false. And here's why the world's boring again. I'm I know, like, great. That's so, so fun. Like, Thanks. stop buzz killing everything. Just leave us alone. You probably are connected to Paul McCartney, the fake Paul McCartney. Paul anyway. Paul McCartney went to the inner earth. He did. He was like, it's that's way better here. I'm sending a clone. Yep. Sending a clone that can a more talented clone. Yeah. To to found wings. He's got really good ideas. Just listen to him, yep. and I know it's gonna piss John off, but like, they're probably gonna fight a lot. Yep. But like, you know, it's gonna be fine. Um. Anyway, we're gonna explore maybe simulation theory next. I've been r- watching some videos about that too, and Can't I'm like, wait. all right, well, nothing is real, just like John Lennon said. See, see. Paul what? McCartney sent hey, that message and was like, John, you got to tell him nothing's real. All I know is Living That Die is one of the sickest songs, and that was definitely done by fake Paul McCartney. Why does he want us to die? I don't know, but he he gets us dancing to it. That's for damn sure. That's for sure. All right, guys. Like a well, good messenger would. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please tune in next week if we're still here. You know, <laughs> We haven't all traveled to the inner earth. Yeah, we'll still be here. Probably will still be here. I feel very rejected by not letting not letting us go to the poles. The we holes in the poles. We can't go to the cave. We don't have a permit. Dude, how, the way they describe it too is so sick. I'm Sounds like, sick. like waterfalls and lush green mountains and so all kinds tight. of shit. And but you know what? If you told people here, it's like it's like waterfalls, lush green mountains. Everyone here is like, yeah, but do they have Netflix? Does it have nonstop unlimited Netflix with a free subscription? That's probably what everyone here would be like. Do we get a free subscription here? No, hell no. That's what I mean. No, we don't. Paradise would be. Oh, when you, you have there, it. You get there, you get your fucking rectangle device in your face, and you get to watch all the Netflix you want, and you, nobody's ever going to bother you. You can see it telepathically in your brain. And then your Postmates shows up at your door, and you don't have to pay for That's nothing. That's what I don't think I could live without. Like, yeah, if see. I had to be in this world, I'm like, oh, I got to gather my own fruit and shit. What if they didn't have Thai food in there? I would die. Exactly. I mean, they probably do, because they have all these different cultures that, like, have connections. Like, I probably have a tunnel to Thailand. Yeah, but it wouldn't be authentic. If it's a tunnel to Thailand... Well, okay, but it, I'm saying unless I'm It would just be a long journey for the postmate, like 14 <laughs> days <laughs> through a fucking tavern. A tavern. All taverns. They probably have taverns along the caverns. They have to. That, so that if we get hungry, it would make sense. Makes sense to me. Okay, well, guys, I've been trying to end the show for a while, but I'm very excited about the Hollow Earth. So um, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.